the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. It's your brother, the preacher, and this is Torah Nuggets. Now this week, we have a double portion. Numbers 30, verse 2 to 32, 42, and Numbers 33, 1 to 36, 13. Matot and Masse, tribes and journeys. So let's get right into it. We're going to deal with our first Torah portion, Matot, which means tribes. The readings through here are Numbers 30, verse 2 through 32, 42. The name of the 42nd reading of the Torah is Matot which means tribes. The name is derived from the words of Numbers 30, verse 1, which says, Then Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes of the sons of Israel. Numbers 30 discussed the laws of vows and oaths. 31 tells the story of Israel's war with Midian. 32 relates the story of how the Reubenites and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh came to inherit the land east of the Jordan River. Excerpts in the biblical calendar and leap year, Matot is read together with subsequent Torah portion, Maseh, on the same Shabbat or the same Sabbath day. We're going to try to break these up. We have a lot because this is the remaining parts of the book of Numbers, and then we're, we're done with Numbers. We, we go we go right into Deuteronomy. And so we've we've come to the end of a of a full of a full book. Amen. And as we read through the books, we we we're going through the season. So once we finish numbers, we go into Deuteronomy and we you know, we're I know we're like deep in the summer, but then we'll start coming out of summer and we start moving closer towards fall. I mean, you say summer's not done. We're in the we're in the midst of of July. That's true. I just we're starting to prepare ourselves, prepare ourselves, and moving towards that that season. Amen. So let's do like we did a little bit of detail here, and let's go ahead and open up to numbers. And as we just read from our Unrolling the scroll book. It says that Moses spake unto the heads. In Hebrew, the word head is rosh. Rosh. Head. Of the tribes of Matot. Concerning the children of Israel saying, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a, with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. This is a very, very important thing this does not what many many will say will is done away with it's not it's not these are things that transcend through the bible your word we have this word is bond my word is bond word is bond has to say, I give you my word. Hot coffee. Hot. <laughs> you a promise keeper. Thou makes promises with your mouth. You ought to keep them. You cannot break them. You would be called a liar. You would, it's, someone would say, well, you said. You said that you would do this thing. I want to make some correlation with some scriptures for us. Let's look at Matthew really quick. Matthew 
Matthew 14. We have a cross reference. And I like cross referencing the Bible. When you when you have a cross reference, you ought to look at it when studying the Bible. 14.9. <clears throat> this was King Herod. When the young lady danced before him and he made a certain vow. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, verse 9, for the oath's sake. And them which sat with him at meat, and he commanded it to be given to her. And so she danced and it pleased him very much. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked for. So you can see that oaths are very serious. And then you have to be careful what, if, you know, Herod was enticed by the woman dancing. You have to be careful, you know, what you make promises, things that arise and get your attention and, and get you to make an oath. And then you got to stand by it. We'll get into what Jesus said. But let's do a little bit of more, a little bit of reading here. Again, we'll recap. If a man make an oath unto the Lord or takes an oath to bind himself with a binding obligation. That's the, the New American Standard Bible reading. He shall not violate his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. At one time... I, I got ahead of the Lord in a certain situation. We were having Shabbat service at a nice place that someone had opened up for us. And it was in a community, so we used the pool house. And the place, you know, began to, the, the services began to grow. And one day I was driving down or in Orange City and I saw this church, which I had my eyes on the church because it was abandoned. It wasn't being used. It was for sale. And I was like, man, that would be a great place to, to be able to take over, to be able to get, to be able to get in there. And we were looking at it. I mean, we were looked it up and everything. We were looking at it. And then one day I was driving by and the sign wasn't there anymore. And it said Shabbat services. And I was like, what? Oh, this, this must be God. This must be God. I, I do Shabbat services. I've been wanting to get in this building and they're having Shabbat services. So I pulled over. Boom. I knock on the door. And this man comes out and he starts talking and he starts talking with a thick island accent he's puerto rican though but he you know he, he his mom i think brought him to barbados or whatever the case may be so he's yeah uh, you know talking with him, yeah man and then we just start talking and brought me inside and i was like well we do shabbat services and why don't you come check out our shabbat services and, and maybe we could do something here or whatever the case would be and, <clears throat> so he came to the Shabbat services, checked it out, and we immediately, like the next week, we had, oh, we're going to go do Shabbat services over here. We're going to, everybody come over here. One person came from our group to that next Shabbat service. And they were they were doing a fundraising to like acquire the building and things. I said, we're going to help you. We're going to help you raise the money and we'll stay here. We'll stay here till you, till you raise the money. And sure enough, I had to stay there and it was difficult for us 
because we felt now trapped. We felt out of the will of God. A lot of the people, I mean, we built up the, the Lord built up the, the little Shabbat services. That we did. I mean, we almost had like 40, 45 people coming, which is pretty good. You know, some churches have 40. We were not, we were not like, we were in a, like a church. We were just having Shabbat services. To having one and then maybe four would come. And I was frustrated. I was so frustrated. I was like, what did we do? And the Lord was like, you got ahead of yourself. You thought it was me, but that wasn't me. You weren't listening from, from me. You weren't hearing from me. You weren't. And because you took a vow, because your word is your bond, you told the man that you would. And so once they hit the number, I was praying. I was like, Lord, get us out of it. And he brought me into the office. He said, now I release you. I stood up in that meeting. I said, I said, hallelujah. And he was like, I said, hallelujah. That's God. That's God. And we came out of that. We had to do Shabbat services in our in our home. Now, you know, the time opened up and you know we were able to find a place where we can do it and stuff. But but ultimately it, now thinking about it, you know, now where we're where our home church is and, 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 and all that's happening and it's like, man, but be careful with your with your words and what entices you. Because then you'll be stuck. You'll be stuck to it. A vow is an oath. Or a vow or an oath is an oral promise. To which a person voluntarily obligates himself. Here's a story. When I was a child, there was a certain solemn oath and vows that my playmates and I would invoke to prove our sincerity. For example, in the attempt to prove the veracity of our words, one child might say to another, I swear, poke a needle in my eye, cross my heart, and hope to die. Though the child scarcely understood the meaning of his words, he was actually promising to bind himself, to blind himself in the eye and asking God to strike him down dead. If, if we are lying. Probably not a good oath for a child to be using. If a child who was a member of an American Boy Scout used the Scout's Honor Pledge. I trust, I trusted his word when another child made a pledge or a promise i'd always wanted to see both of his hands in a certain to be certain that his fingers were not crossed behind his back cross fingers apparently absolved <laughs> from keeping our word vows and oaths are not disappeared from the world if a Roman Catholic enters the priesthood, he takes certain vows. If a person becomes a monk or a nun, he or she takes vows of the order. When a man or a woman get married, they exchange vows. Vows are like extra solemn promises, which we accept God to hold us accountable The Hebrew word for vow is neder. Neder is a type of vow which a person binds himself or herself to perform a certain act or refrain from a certain thing. A vow is understood as a promise, obligation, or prohibition that a person declares upon himself or herself. The Nazarite vow in number six is a good example of a biblical vow. 
Amen. <laughs> Other uh, oaths are similar to vows when a politician begins his term and takes an oath of office before testifying in a court of law. A witness is required to take an oath to tell the truth, sometimes by swearing on the Bible or other holy books. An oath, a shevua, can be any statement, formal declaration, or promise that a person swears to uphold. In Bible times, oaths were taken in the name of God. The idea was that if a person takes an oath, proved false, the gods would deal with him. The Bible warns us not to take oaths in the name of gods. Instead, if one must take a vow or an oath, he should fear only the Lord and swear by his name, Deuteronomy 6, 13. When a person in the days of the Bible wanted to make a vow or an oath, he would say something like, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not do such and such. Or he might say, as the Lord lives, I will do such and such. However, taking an oath or a vow in the name of God is risky enterprise. The Lord warns us not to swear fal falsely by his name so as to profane the name of our God, Leviticus 19.12. This is the meaning of the commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, Exodus 27. When you take up, I believe we talked about this, but you, Nasa, you, you lift up the name, you're going to carry his name. So you shouldn't carry his name falsely, and you shouldn't make vows or all oaths falsely you ought to perform all that you say that you're going to do amen god says if a person takes his name in vain he will not leave that per person unpunished that's why yeshua the disciple and his disciples he, oh, sorry warned his disciples against needlessly taking oaths if a person does take an oath or a vow, he should make every possible effort to keep his word. Not only that, a person should treat everything that comes out of their mouth as if it was a solemn vow. The Torah says he shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth, out of his mouth. Numbers 30 verse 2, which we read according to all that proceedeth out of the mouth. This requires being careful about everything we say, not just vows and oaths. In the Didaske, which is the extra, I don't like to say extra biblical, but we, it's a, it was a book that the apostles, it's the doctrine of the apostles. Some say Didike, Didaske, Didaske. You shall not be double-minded or double-tongued. For to be double-tongued is a snare of death. Your speech shall not be false nor empty, but fulfilled by deed. It's the doer of the word. James talks about being a double-minded. You can't be double-minded. Don't think that you're going to receive anything that you say because it's a double mind. And then you say that you're going to do some things, but you don't, you don't do them. You don't stand by them. Your word is not your bond. You would be find out, you would be found out to be a liar of those things that you say that you're going to do. You say you're going to help somebody. You better help somebody. You say you're going to, you're going to do something. You ought to do that. Don't say that you're going to you're going to help someone or you're going to do something and then you don't do it. Matthew chapter 
chapter 5. Verse 33, this is obviously he's, we're, we're talking about the Sermon on the Mount. And again, ye have heard, and it has, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thy oaths. But I say to you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is the footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither thou shalt swear by the head, by thy head, what they were saying, right? poke a needle in my eye, I cross my heart and hope to die. Oh, don't. Because thy, thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your communication be yes, yea, yea, or nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than that comes of evil. And in some translations, it comes from the evil one. Really, that's the devil. <laughs> it comes from the evil one. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. That's why when some people, you know, we give an invitation. Oh, maybe. That's a no. I take it as a no. No. Or... Uh, if I don't have anything else better to do. Oh, thanks a lot. No. Don't come. <laughs> if I have if I don't have anything else better to do. Don't come, man. <laughs> Stand by your word. Stand by your word. <clears throat> when certain monies was given to me for this gym. And then my friend Shuttlesworth preached the message and he was talking about when he acquired a building, he felt that the man was testing him because he said he was going to build a church. So he didn't want to, he didn't want to wait many months and to get things, he wanted to get right on it to show the man that he was serious. And that that impacted me very much because someone gave me a good amount of money to for the next phase which was this was this building here that we're in and the lord was like he's testing you to see if you'll finish see if you'll you'll do all that you say you're going to do are you going to do what he what he what he told you to do because he invested in you. You said that you were going to get this place operational and get it up and running. And we need to get it done. We needed to get it done. You know, he gave us the money for the shower. And, and we need to finish that shower before he gets his butt in here. <laughs> into this place. I thought you were going to do the shower. I thought you were going to do this. I thought you were going to do that. Oh, well, you know, uh, well, your word is not bond. Your word is not true. It's like when people say, oh, hey, man, well, I'll help you. Don't worry, I'll help you. That let your, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. No, it's cool. And it, my help comes from the Lord. Now, yes, we, you know, we... We love to receive from people, people to get involved in all of those things. It's like a buddy of mine, one of the persons who, who supports us. Hey, I'm going to give you this certain amount. And there are people that like, 
oh, but you said that you were going to give me this amount. You said it. No, we just leave it. I'm going to see. And sure enough, I said, I said to you that I was going to give you this. Sorry. And, 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 and my friend was like, sorry, it took me a little bit longer than, than usual. But here you go. I made a promise to you. Promise keeper. God is a promise keeper. God is a promise keeper. And the Bible says, be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. Mimic God. We are mimicking him. Jesus is the full expression of God. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. If he's our father, we he owns us. He created us in the womb. It was you, Lord, says, says the psalmist, that created me in my mother's womb. So we belong to him. We are children. So we ought to behave as our father. Well, our, our father is not a man that he should lie. But all that he says, he will do. Be like your father in heaven. Be imitators of God. As beloved children, walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. God don't like no liars. False. What is he? Man, I'm trying to come out of this, and then we start getting into it. <laughs> Six things in the book of Proverbs, six things the Lord hates, seven are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, a lying tongue. He continues to say hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. I, man. Matthew 12, 36. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they had spoken. <laughs> Man. We, we did, you know, watch your mouth the other day when we came back from, from Pittsburgh. And we're, we're kind of still on that. You know, your words and your vows and you, let your yeah, yes, I will do that. No, sorry, I cannot do that. Because you bind yourself and God holds you accountable to that. And you'll have to answer. You'll have to answer to those things. Support the ministry. Dollar sign three, John one, five. This has been a crazy month, so we'll see what happens with services. We're looking to do something outside. I have to see how we're going to do all of that in recording, and perhaps we just won't do a live, and we'll record it, then upload it. <clears throat> Subscribe to the channel. We started Kingdom Business Series. 
which I'm excited about. And I will do Covenant Eye series this week as well. So we're excited. All that's going on. All that's happening. Man, family, we love you. In the name of Yeshua, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Shalom, shalom.